Whether this is working for or against Harry depends what you think the end game is. In his two interviews, he has said that his end game is now bringing about some kind of reform of the UK media. That is both a huge task and probably an impossible one, and probably also not something for somebody to do who has an imperfect understanding of the media, as he clearly does. So one of the things you hear him talk about all the time is tabloids. His hatred and, and resentment is directed against tabloids, as if it were not the broadsheets who are also um, carrying many, many of these stories, as if it were not broadcasters carrying these stories. And he also doesn't recognise the need and value of good journalism, or he doesn't explicitly realise that. So him as a press reformer, tricky. One of the ironies of the press coverage here, the really terrible UK press coverage, is that you have people um, bloviating about how badly Harry's behaved and being terribly, terribly critical of him and doing it as if they are defending the monarchy. They are in fact contributing to the undermining of the monarchy, both in trivialising it as a soap opera but also because the monarchy actually needs to understand what went wrong and it needs to put those things right. And instead, and, and a polar, it's not supposed to polarise, the monarchy is supposed to unify. So they're also contributing to all sorts of ongoing problems for the monarchy, um, these supposed defenders. They are so ridiculous, I'm sorry. I... <laughs> if his end game is a reconciliation with his family, again I wouldn't have thought this was the way to bring it about, but that doesn't mean I'm critical of him doing it, because I think his real purpose in all of this is that he has felt traduced by everything that's been written and said about him, and he felt the need to try to regain the narrative. He's done that to the limited extent that this is ever possible. The idea that his family are not responding to any of this is also untrue. So there has been a big press um, narrative here to say that there is a dignified silence on behalf of royals and the palace. Absolute nonsense. If you actually look at the press responses to the interviews, to the book, these are planted stories. This is exactly what Harry is talking about. You know, it's all about palace sources and if, like me, you're a, a royal watcher and you know who has which source, you actually can tell who's planted the stories. This is a huge constitutional issue for him, it's a huge reputational issue for him, and it comes ahead of his coronation and in the very early phase of his reign. So he is having to respond to this both as a parent and as a monarch. And um, I don't really know what he's going to do, but he absolutely needs to try to do something 
um, it can't be something public, it can't be by way of a public response. So it will have to be some kind of reaching out on his part. But given the levels of anger and hurt that there are in royal circles, uh, it may be hard for him to do that. I think one of the really big problems is that the royal family is misunderstood as a tourist attraction, as celebrities, as a sideshow, as the cast of The Crown, um, you know, a long-running soap opera. This is a huge institution of state. It has significant powers, it has significant influence, it gets a shed load of money from us, the taxpayers. It has, uh, you know, the, the king is head of state in 14 other realms as well. And we're treating it like a soap opera. Obviously, this is reputationally damaging in all sorts of ways, because how can you have credibility as head of state? How can this be a credible system if what you're seeing is dysfunction and also inequality? Because this is a story, of course, about um, you know, race, about misogyny, about all sorts of things that are part of modern discourse and the institution is failing every time it tries to deal with these things.